But in that case, I should stop waffling and get off the stage. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mike P. doing his fantastic Turbo Speed, your WordPress website. And with that, I shall scoot off the stage. Thank you very much. And goodbye. Whee! Well, welcome. Can everyone hear me OK? So, yep, excellent. Um, so last slot, and wow, it's been you know, an, an amazing weekend, hasn't it? And well done for you guys staying until the end as, as well. Um, so as you can see, um, I'm going to be talking a bit about um, optimizing your website for, um, for loading speed. Um, I literally am touching, skimming the surface of, of this, uh, this subject. It's a huge area, and there's been a few presentations this weekend that I've already given you a, a bit of a taster. Um, so hopefully this presentation just gives you a few ideas for you to go and actually you know, go and play with this kind of stuff um, yourself. Um, so just quickly in my background, um, I do design and, and front-end development, um, so that's really where um, my kind of interest in, in this area comes from. I also host um, customer websites, so I've got a bit of an incentive that I don't want them hogging their websites, hogging all the server resources. So I actually, you know, want to make sure the websites are optimised um, pretty well um, too. So why does it matter that your um, that your website runs fast? Um, Quite simply, you'll frustrate your users if, if it doesn't run um, if it doesn't run fast. There's a lot of research on this, and it, and it seems people seem to suggest that every single second you know matters. And I know we all have that frustration where you're you're waiting for you know the, the timers going round, waiting for a website to to load. Um, not only does it equate to a really bad user experience if a website runs slowly, but it also can impact on your SEO as well. And I'm pretty sure you're, you're aware that Google uses um, page um, loading speed as, as one of their ranking factors. Um, so Google say, um, for them, we must deliver and render above the fold content, so, that, so what people can see on their screen, within one second. I mean, that's pretty impressive, but you know, Google's got um, obviously a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, clever people there that can be able to do that kind of stuff. Um, but they say after one second, um, the, the, the person starts thinking, you know, I'm waiting here, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And um, you know, after two or three seconds, people think, is this page actually going to load at all? Um, you know, if you're on a, a train going home tonight and you've got a 3G connection, um, you know, you're thinking, shall I just cancel this, um, you know, this, this page loading? Is it going to turn up at, at all? So there's a real risk that people will abandon the visit um, you know, there is a threshold where um, people will start leaving. Um, but for Google, they say you know, they, they want things being loaded um, within, within one second. So um, the HTTP archive, they've got some really useful, um, use, useful reports on, on this kind of subject. Um, they, this graph is, you can't really see the detail of this. It's over the past five years, um, up until uh, March um, 2016. And they say the average weight of a web page in the past year has increased by 12%. That's file size, 12% in one year. And that's looking at you know, thousands and thousands of websites that they monitor. And the actual weight of that is, is the average per page is two megabytes um, per page. Home pages generally tend to be a, a bit more above that as well. Um, also, you, you might be able to work out on this graph, but the the bottom line, that's the number of um, HTTP requests, or quite simply, the number of fi individual files being downloaded into the visitor's browser per page. Um, quite a lot of those files tend to be JavaScript files, particularly in the last you know, few years, jQuery, responsive websites. Um, we're relying a lot more on JavaScript, and you, know, that, you can quite often have lots of files with that. Um, images, especially, especially images. Um, with larger monitors, people want to you know, use bigger images um, and retina displays. Um, so that's also increasing that file size per, per page. And why does that matter? Well, over the past few years, we've been trying to make websites load faster or load better on mobile devices. Um, you know, so we're, we all have you know, responsive websites. We're trying to help people um, who, um, you know, who use the website on their mobile phone, but quite often we're testing websites in our own office, whether you know, the iPhone might be connected to the, the office Wi-Fi, um, but how often do we get on the train and try to use our websites when 
you know, you haven't got that optimum connection. Um, on, a, um, on a 3G connection, the initial um, request um, it generally takes about half a second. That's before anything happens. Um, so you've always got that little bit of time lag anyway um, from, from mobile users who are not using the, um, say, a Wi-Fi network. Um, and also, um, mobile phones as well generally can't download as, as many files in one go simultaneously than a desktop computer can. So what can we do about it? Well, the first thing is test your website loading speed. And um, not just your home page, but actually test. Um, look at different pages. Look at your gallery page. Look at your about page. You know the, the product pages. Um, so that's that's really important to give give um, the, your website a, a proper thorough test. Um, I will tweet this out and put these slides online next week. So I will you'll, you'll get a copy of these links if you want to um, to use them. Just going quickly through these. I mean, these are three. Um, services that I, that I tend to use myself. Um, the first one, Pingdom, is it's a, it's a very basic, quick tool. If you're a bit of a beginner in this area, that's a really good one to use. It just gives you a very quick um, summary of, of your website, and you can see a bit about what's happening there. Uh, Google, the Google one is actually really good for, for mobile testing. You can actually see on there um, how your website performs on, um, on mobile websites, and it will give you some useful advice you can actually put into practice. And um, webpagetest.org, the third one in that list, um, that's like the ultimate tool, the Swiss Army knife of um, website test, of speed testing. Um, that's got so much useful stuff in there. There are others as well. There's uh, G GT Metrics, um, which I use occasionally sometimes. And um, Katie did a good talk yesterday um, about Chrome browser and some of the hidden functions in that. Um, and you can actually do quite a lot of speed testing um, in Chrome as well, so that's worth a, worth a look and um, check out her slides as well. So um, this, is, this is Pingdom, um, it, it probably I'm probably sure a few of you have used this already. Um, so just, just giving you a um, number of requests, that website, that page is loading, uh, the, the load time of that page, the page size, and it gives you this waterfall down there as well, so you can see when the files are loading um, within that sequence um, there. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the performance score. Um, this website has got a performance grade of 86 out of 100, but they all ver the different websites vary about how they actually calculate that score. Um, use it as a rough guide, but don't worry too much about the detail um, of that. This next one is a web page. Uh, webpagetest.org. Um, you can choose different browsers. You can choose different web. Um, you can emulate different speeds. You can choose different locations, and you can choose London as well as a as a base for that. Um, the um, it's got some really advanced features in this, and the one thing I really like about this is the re recording of the loading sequence. You can really slow it down and see when different objects in your page are loading. Um, and that can be really useful for optimizing your website, particularly if you're a developer um, and seeing um, the order of, of how things are loading there. So I'm just going to talk about a few core techniques um, here that I tend to use. I'm literally just touching the very basics of these, um, these kind of areas. Um, so the first one, looking at, at caching. And I'm just going to show you an example website. This is a, a really, really content-heavy uh, website. It's an internet site. But let's just look at the, um, Alice, when WordPress generates that page, when a visitor goes to that page, that page has got to be generated. And you've got to, it's got to generate a navigation menu at the top. There's a weather system widget thing up the top there as well. It's got the latest news articles. It's got the featured images, the, the thumbnails there. It's got comments on the right-hand side. There's the, the week's most popular news articles, the recently updated pages. It's got the events there. It's got the vacancies, tweets at the bottom. There's a lot going on there. Every single time that page is loaded, WordPress is having to generate all those bits together. And that does take you know, a bit of time uh, to do. So that's where caching comes in. Um, 
if your web host, and quite a few, particularly the WordPress-specific web hosting companies now, um, they actually have cash-in options they can do on their end for you. I'm not going to cover this in any more depth. If, if you have that available to you, you know, use that, be using that. It's a really, really good um, tool to be using. If the, you, you have a shared host and it's not WordPress-specific, um, you may need to install, install your own cash-in plugin. Um, so that's, um, I'll just quickly show you an example of uh, one that I've used in the past. And um, Hypercache, it's, it's a really simple plugin. You can just pretty much activate it and it works out the box without having to um, go through loads of options. Uh, there's others as well, WP Supercache, and there's a paid one, WP Rocket. There's actually lots of other um, tools out there now. But have a look, see one, which one works for you, um, and just have a little explore around. Right, I'm going to go into a real example now, just to show you what, that, um, what the impact of that um, actually does. And so this is a, a theme, it's an off-the-shelf premium theme. I've imported this, the, the, all the demo data into this website, and it's really poorly optimized. It's not in a good, um, it's not good at all. So we're going to just run it through a few different stages, um, for some of these kind of um, techniques. So put it through Pingdom, and you can see it's coming up there. Um, it's loading about 79 different files. It's uh, taking just over five seconds to load. And it's about six megabytes. And that's just loading the demo content of how that author of that, that theme has set this up. Um, now, if you, what I would suggest before you run a test, if you're going to use, say, I mean, on this example, I'm going to now activate um, Hypercache. What I would say is when you're logged into the WordPress website, you're seeing the, the real pages not through the, the cache generally, with, with that plugin certainly. So what I'd suggest is then open a private window where you're logged out and then go to a few pages so the cache, the cache pages actually get generated first, then run it through a, a tool um, like Pingdom. Um, also, I'd suggest running a web test, um, a speed test, several times as well. You'll quite often get just little tiny differences in the, um, in the speed time of these when you run these kind of tools. Um, so just looking at this one, um, so all, literally all I've done is just activate Hypercache on this one. And you can see straight away, just saving about three quarters of a second. Um, and with that internet site example I showed you, you would certainly see a much, much bigger difference than that. Um, some of this does depend on your web host as well, which I'll, I'll come on to. So just taking that example, so we've saved straight away about 13% of, um, of the loading time, and that's just by activating um, a plugin. Just as a, as a quick aside, you also have local, what's called local caching, and that's where files are stored on a, on a user's computer. So um, a bit like temp or temporary internet files, effectively, is what they are. Um, CSS files and maybe images, and your, especially things like your logo and your website, those don't change very often. So if you've got a website where people are coming time and time again, you can just instruct that browser to save a copy of those um, files so that next time a visitor comes to your website, those files are already, already stored on the user's computer. And there are various ways to do this, and, and different plugins will do this kind of thing. Um, but this is my preferred way, which is using your HT access um, file um, on your web server, but um, have, a, have a look around and see what method works for you. There's various different ways you can do this. So the next method I'm going to look at is combining files. And you know, I said this, this theme that I've just, um, basically the one I've installed here, was not very well optimized. Well, this is kind of showing some of the um, resources it's actually loading. Um, you won't be able to see the detail of this, but there's loads and loads of CSS files. There's lots of JavaScript files here. Um, and that's, you, that's going to take time to load all those different files. It's particularly an issue with um, lots of these premium, file, uh, premium pl um, themes that you find on them that you can buy when quite often they, they try to do everything and they load different sliders and different features. Um, so just be wary of that. 
obviously, the developers amongst you who develop your own themes, you know, this won't be so much of an issue, but this is more really for people who um, you know, use third-party themes. So to try to, um, to speed up the loading time, um, the idea is to combine these into as few files as possible, and that reduces the number of HTTP requests between the browser and the web server, or effectively how many files the user has to download to, to view your website. So just tallying up what we got at the moment, 23 different CSS files and 35 JavaScript files, um, that's a pretty bloated website. You don't generally see um, you know, things quite as bad as that. So all I've done here is activated a plugin, and what that's done is actually combined, um, let's say, a lot of the files, and here it's got different CSS files, um, into one, um, it's basically one file. Um, so it's actually then just combining them in, combining into one file. It's one download rather than you know, a dozen different downloads. And so with that, we've taken it down from 23 to 6 um, style files and taken it down from 35 to 12 JavaScript files just by using a, um, a plugin, which I'll come on to. The other thing, um, you can kind of do it at the same time, it's called minification. And that's about stripping out all the unnecessary characters in your files, um, such as line breaks and comments. And it's all those little things that doesn't actually make any difference to how the web page um, loads, or it doesn't make a difference to how it looks or it renders. Um, things like comments in files are just there for your benefit, really. Um, so you can just strip those out and all those empty spaces. So at the top one, that's just a nice formatted file. At the bottom, it's, it's taken out all, all the nice formatting stuff in the codes. Um, it, it probably won't normally save more than a few kilobytes of doing that, but still, every little you know, helps with, with this. So this is an, an example um, of a, a plugin, um, Better WordPress Minify. And um, you can, if you do a search on, uh, on WordPress.org, you will find lots of different plugins now that do this. Um, this is one of the early ones that started doing this. Um, and you can then combine, it automatically combine your files. You can exclude certain files if you don't want them to be combined. Um, the thing I would say, if you're activating this on, on, say, a premium theme, one that you've got from a third party, always do a test to make sure this is run properly, and particularly test it in Internet Explorer, because you can sometimes have a few issues um, with this. So let's put it back through the, the speed test. So that's where we were after the, um, the, the cache wasn't um, added. Um, so then we've, so it's about four and a half seconds before we do this, um, before we activate this plugin, Better WordPress Minify. And just by running that plugin, activating that, we've now got another half a second saving. Um, and usually in this case, it's actually saved a lot of um, uh, in terms of the, the, um, the overhead, the actual um, data, large data saving as well, that's not normally the case you'd see with this. Um, with this particular theme, there's obviously stuff going on there, um, but, but there's been a good, um, a, a good speed saving, and that's just by activating that, that plugin. So adding this together, um, adding, the, adding the caching and the combining the files, we've saved about a quarter of that time now of that page loading, just very, very simply, and very, very little effort as we needed so far. So next thing, I'm going to look at our images. And we look at this demo theme, and there's a big, large image on the, um, on the home page there. And just having a look at that theme, and it's pretty poor, the, the, the picture itself. And this is a demo content loaded with that theme. It's over one megabyte for that image, which is pretty, pretty big. So we'll resize that, we'll compress it down. So um, resizing, about reducing the size of the picture, it doesn't have to be 2,000 pixels wide. Um, compressing is about using, like say, a JPEG or a, um, a PNG compression technique. Um, the program I've, I've demoed here is, is called uh, Riot um, Editor, a free um, picture editor. But any, you know, most desktop programs, you'll probably all have your own favorites to use for this. Um, there's also uh, tinypng.com. It does some incredible magic. It really reduces files, um, images down so much. So that's definitely worth a, um, a look at that. So that one image, compressing that down and resizing it, um, that's, you know, been a, that's a big, big file, say, a file size saving. That's a data transfer that is reduced right down. 
Uh, Keith Devon did a talk yesterday about using responsive images, and I know he's put his slides on today, so it's definitely worth having a look at his slides too, um, because that covers another area about responsive images. So I've gone through, I've um, optimized a few of the other images on that, that demo content on that theme as well, and we can then see it's taken another um, about half a second off that loading time. But most importantly as well, it's also taken from four megabytes down to a megabyte of that, that size. So on, especially on mobile devices, on 3G connections or 2G connections, um, that will certainly be a much, much bigger saving than just a half second there. So adding that all together, and you know, that was all pretty quick stuff. You could do that you know, within half hour, those three, or less than that probably, those three different techniques there. Um, we've, we've basically saved about a third of the um, time, so from about five seconds to about three and a half seconds. Uh, um, this is starting from a, a theme that isn't really that well optimized anyway, so you can, you can get that time down a lot more on other themes. Um, and it, you know, it's quite a bloated theme there. Um, but it just, gives, just shows you how easy it is to do this kind of stuff. Some more, more considerations with, with images. Um, what, what I see some of those customers are doing, they would use as a WordPress, within the editor, they'll just drag the picture from that size to, you know, to a smaller size, thinking it's, it's resizing the picture, what they can see, but it's still loading that full size image. Um, the other thing that sometimes people do is they put full size digital camera pictures in, into, their, um, into their websites, and you could be talking maybe five uh, megabytes per picture. So it's really important um, to, you know, to educate your, your customers or if you're doing websites yourself to make sure your pictures um, are being edited before you put them onto your website. Um, there are also plugins out there that will um, basically resize and compress your pictures automatically on upload. And there's, there's various different um, plugins and techniques you can do with that. Right, sliders. Um, these are not good for for web speed, and I think that's, that's probably pretty obvious. Um, they generally load some quite large images on your, um, on your page. The module, it's, module itself normally loads quite a few JavaScript files and style files. The research also shows that people generally only see the first slide. They don't wait for it to go ticking around every 10 seconds to a new, um, a new picture. They rarely work well on mobile. Quite often people ignore them completely because they look like an advert. Um, and also they push your main content further down the page when you want to get your key information up the top of the page. So if you're thinking about website speed as well as usability, just think really, do you need that website slider you know, on, your, on your homepage? Something else as well, parallax, um, par parallax effects and images, they can also really um, increase the amount of data used um, that's, that's used in the loading sequence of your website. Um, I'm not saying don't use parallax background images completely, but don't go over the top with them because they will add quite a lot of weight into your page. Another just um, a quick technique as well, um, image sprites. And this is where you combine images, generally quite small images, into, a, into one single image file. And this actually then, again, reduces the number of HTTP requests. So you can have maybe a series of you know, a dozen or so pictures, small or small icons, within one image file. Um, so it can be quite a, an effective technique. So here we've got, on, on this example, six different icons there. When you put the mouse over, they actually roll over to a, another version of the icon as well. So in effect, on this screen here, you actually got, um, you've got 12 different um, images being loaded, so you can combine them. Arguably, actually, in this case, you could probably use an SVG file um, or technique um, for this, but that's an, a, another topic completely, really. Um, but these are pretty good normally for things like logos and that, and that kind of thing. So all it basically is, the, the icons get combined into one single image file, and then you use a bit of code, um, which will actually then display portions of that larger image file um, so it's, it's a good technique uh, to use, um, and yeah, so it's basically called image image sprites. There is a tool that I can recommend, SpritePad. Um, developers, you'll probably have different tools that you use yourself in your own workflow, um, but this has a free account for this one, 
and um, it's a really nice tool. You can add your pictures in and then just drag them and it generates the code for you. Um, so it's, it's a really nice little technique. The other thing you're probably quite familiar with is um, icon fonts. And these are quite good if you just want generic icons. They're, they're a good option for those kind of little icons you just need. And that are, um, you know, things like on, on here you've got um, like shopping cart icons, that kind of thing. They do scale pretty well. They render very quickly. They're, they're pretty well supported. Uh, but Sarah did a talk yesterday about using SVG, so that scalable vector graphics. Um, the more advanced of you um, will, um, will probably want to explore, explore that. So that's, that's covered images. Just quickly going through a few other little bits. Um, it's pretty obvious your web host plays a big, big part in the load time of your website. Um, if you're targeting a UK audience and your web server is in America and you're paying $4 a month for, for that, the chances are that website probably won't load as fast as you know, some, a hosting solution that's a bit better. Um, you want to read a low con contention ratio, not cheap hosting where those servers are being crammed full of websites. So um, performance also goes hand in hand with reliability too. So, so social share bu buttons, you might have widgets and buttons and stuff on your website and it, it shows you how many um, Facebook likes you've got for that particular page. Just bear in mind those kind of things can hog performance too um, because it's having to then send um, a request to the you know, Facebook server and back again. Um, I like this little plugin, this is quite a good one. It's a really, really small um, plugin, a really small script. Um, or you could even use something like the Font Awesome uh, web font I showed you in another slide. Um, they have social media icons in there as, as well. A bit more technical for those uh, more advanced um, views in WordPress. Um, developers think about the ordering of your code. So load essential things first, that's, that's pretty obvious. Um, really good example is not WordPress sites, but the BBC and The Guardian, they put so much time into this and they're very much leading the way. Um, so they really want the text to load as quickly as possible. All the other things like fancy clickable things and images can come a second later, um, but they, it's all about getting the headline, getting the text and displaying. Something else you might want to have a look at, data URIs, and that is, a, um, the best way to describe that is it's an image um, saved as HTML code within your, within your, your HTML file. Um, just Google it, have a little look, that might be right. If you've got maybe small icons and stuff, it's perhaps worth a, a look. Um, that can help performance because it's, it's, loading, it's not loading any external images um, in, in your page. CDNs, content delivery networks. Um, if you are targeting a UK audience, then and, and not, a, say, not a global audience, a CDN might not actually be the best um, solution for you. Um, in fact, it can actually degrade, harm performance. If you're running a global website, then yeah, CDNs are great. But if you're using a CDN, try doing load tests with your with CDN off and CDN on, and just seeing what works good for you. And also uh, cron jobs and maintenance. Sometimes um, you'll wait for a visitor to go to the website for WordPress to do its maintenance tasks, and that might be things like cleaning the cache, um, checking for plugin updates. Um, it's best to run scheduled tasks from the server itself um, so that you can actually see so not impacting on the um, performance time when a visitor goes to that, that web page. So it, it's a huge, huge area, this. Um, you know, I've just touched on a few techniques, um, and, and you know, hopefully this gives you a bit of inspiration to, um, to think about your own website's loading speeds. Um, you know, give it a test, have a look what you can do, how you can squeeze out that bit of extra time. Um, you know, I showed you earlier how easy it is to take your website's speed down by a third, say, in that example. Um, but just have a little play around, use a search engine, have a look what other people are doing, have a look at some of the techniques and you know, just, just see what works good for, for your website. And um, I'll, I'll share these slides online later in the week, so if you look at the website or Twitter, Facebook, and um, thank you very much. Okay, thanks Mike, that was great. Do we have any questions?
Come on, we've got a hand up here. How do you see something like Cloudflare fitting into that um, process? I have benchmarked Cloudflare um, before. I actually found it didn't help with the um, with performance. Um, but again, every scenario is going to be different, I think, with that. And I mean, Cloudflare doing also things like security, filtering, and firewall stuff. Um, but I, the examples I, I, I was looking at, um, it didn't really help too much in, in the kind of benchmarking that I, I looked at. Particularly, um, so you, say for instance, the web servers that, that I sometimes use, um, they're based, say, in, in the Midlands in the UK, where you can get things to people quickly. They're on the main trunk routes of the, um, of the UK. And say Cloudflare might be going for the, for the DNS and going to uh, a you know, server location, I don't know, maybe somewhere else. So it, but I'd say always these things test them, just you know, do, your, do your testing really on, on these kind of um, examples, see what works well. If you've got a global website, then yeah, those kind of things are really, really good. You don't want um, your audience in, in um, you know, Japan or America loading it from you know, something like Derby. That's probably not going to help them. Uh, but yeah, every scenario is different really with that kind of stuff. So you didn't see it slowing down the website, but it didn't help, but you could argue that the security benefits are important as well? You could definitely argue that, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I did see in one instance it slowed it down a bit, um, but I'm sure there's, there's examples where it could actually make it faster. Um, it just, yeah, it depends on the website, the audience and that. But yeah, security benefits are definitely um, also a consideration with that. I'll let you guys sort it all out. <laughs> Thanks for that. Great. Um, two questions. One is, um, if you're focused on a UK audience and you've got your DNS hosting, say, Canada, which is where I happen to use my DNS hosting, do you think that has a negative impact? It could do. I mean, the, the thing with DNS is that your, your ISP will then cache the DNS records anyway. Um, but I think, it, yeah, I, I, I can't see it helping. I'm not sure if it would be a, too much of, a, of a, a negative thing, but, but use a tool to say like Pingdom, you'll, you'll see um, on the very first line a time to connect. And if that's say, a second, just to get the connection to that web server before any files start downloading, that could be an issue then. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't say it being a, a, a positive thing, but it, it might not be too bad with the... So it, do, you, do you host your website files for in the UK? Yeah, the DNS they're, is, yeah. Yep, they're hosted in the UK, but the DNS is in Canada um, at Hover. Um, if you, because I've looked at Pingdom's timings, any, any ideas for troubleshooting DNS specifically, or drilling into DNS timing specifically? Um, using something like the web page test, or can actually looking at, um, seeing what that's doing, but unless you manage your own, you know, unless you're really into that, that server admin yourself, really core, cool, the things you can do really then is actually just you know, looking at your, your hosting company, seeing what they can do. Um, yeah, I, I know that's a, if, if you've got issues with that, um, that could be on, the, on their side looking at, at stuff. Great. But yeah, I, I couldn't give you too much info exactly on that DNS stuff, I'm afraid. And, and I, this is a, an embarrassing uh, confession, but I uh, was troubleshooting a, a site that was running unusually slowly recently, and it wasn't until we realized we'd left debug on <laughs> that we realized why we were two seconds slower than we should have been. So we saved two seconds just by turning debug off. Fantastic. I should have done a slide with that. <laughs> Sorry, sort of follow-on question, really. What um, requirements or checklist or something would you give to your server people and say, look, this is what I want? Obviously, there's WP Engine. There's a few providers here at the moment. But do you, I'm not saying you should recommend one over the other. What I'm saying is what requirements would you give them? What's your top 10 things you should say? I want this. I want this. I want this. OK, um, so it depends on the website itself. But um, let's say that, um, recently we launched a, a, a website for you know, a global um, company. and. Um, but you know, a kind of typical shared host was not going to be good for them. They need dedicated RAM, um, you know, things like that. Was actually going to really that makes a huge, huge difference to running that website. Um, again, I, you know, I'm, I'm a bit very non-committal with this, but it, it would it depend on the situation a bit. Um, but yeah, if, if you're talking about 
big name, big brand, high traffic websites, um, you've got to pick a solution that, that is um, um, good for them. Things like PHP 7 and stuff, it's not, that's not my kind of area more as a, as a front end developer, but those kind of things, you know, I know for a fact, those things help speed um, websites up. Um, looking at the database engine um, as well, that's, you know, that's, that's a crucial part. Particularly some of the old traditional web hosting companies, they, they're much more geared up to, to for you know, static HTML style websites. Um, you can run benchmarks on stuff, even in WordPress, there's a plugin I was using recently that will benchmark um, the, the PHP query times and the MySQL connections, and it'll basically create loads of entries, delete the entries, run different benchmark stuff through. So you can use that kind of stuff as well to see, um, you see how the, the hosting provider is, is dealing with that, really. Anybody else? I, it's it's oh. more of just a side note because you mentioned browser browser caching. So uh, uh, just as a, a tip that I picked up, uh, if you put a query in the variable when you enqueue your style sheets in JavaScript, and yeah. that you can put that to the current Unix time, then the browser always thinks it's a different file and will always get it. And it's really handy if you're dealing with clients because yep. they don't they might know how to refresh or you know clear their cache or whatever. So that's handy. Yeah, no, that's a really good. Yeah, really good. And you don't have to go into the HD access then and... Any other um, questions or tips or stuff people want to share? Anyone? Yep, one over there. Um, hi. Um, I use some of these tools. Um, thanks for sort of reminding me of some of the others. But um, when I was trying to get things below the fold, um, uh, ENQ scripts and CSS. Certain plugins don't like that. Gravity Forms is an example. Um, is there a way of pushing as much below the fold, but then going back to certain plugins and saying, actually, you could go in the header if you have to? Yeah, um, that um, the plugin I showed you there, um, Better WordPress um, Minify, was it that I think? Um, what that will do is it'll it'll scan what what resources are being loaded. And then you can selectively put some, say, up the top in, in, the, um, in the, the head area, um, some in the bottom. Um, you can selectively take out um, individual files, take them out of the, the combining completely if you have to, um, or you can reorder them. You can, you can actually, as long as the theme is designed well and theme morphers aren't put in the resources you know, without um, putting it through the proper loop process, um, but yeah, but that, that plugin, if you run that, that will probably help with, um, with that situation. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, one, one here. Um, what about um, HTTP versus HTTPS? Will that have any positive or negative impact on speed? <laughs> um, it's a really good question, that actually. Um, I, yeah, I don't actually. I've done. So, I've looked at some benchmarking stuff with this, and um, generally people would say HTTPS would is going to slow things down. Um, but actually, there's evidence to say that's not the case, and it, it would depend a bit on the um, the hosting as well. How you know how they can cope with that. Um, there's probably not much in it with the speed stuff actually now. I think I wouldn't worry too much about the speed stuff with that. And I think like the earlier kind of points, security. You know, the, while speed is good, security is also good. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about the, the kind of the overheads of HTTPS rather than box standards, HTTP. Yep. Anybody else? You've got away with it, mate. That was brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank Mike, you. Oh, put your hands together for Mike, please.